when you know when I asked Chad the other day, I was like, "Hey, um, you know, where where is JJ?" And he said, "For my security, he didn't want me to know. So, is there a reason I should be in danger to know where he is?" I just want you to know that at this time, the Savior is saying to me, "Well done, <laughs> thy soul is cleansed." You could talk about that search. SSW wind. That search occurred the last day of Ty Lee Ryan's sighting, and we believe she was uh, burned and buried on his property the following day. There have been some very disturbing pieces of evidence presented so far in the trial of Chad Daybell, the man accused of being at the center of multiple deaths, from revealing recorded calls to damaging web searches to potentially incriminating statements caught on police dash cam we are going to break down some of these moments for you. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. There have been some very disturbing pieces of evidence that have been introduced in the Chad Daybell trial out of Idaho. And it's not really that surprising, considering this is the former doomsday author who's been charged with the murders of his first wife, 49-year-old Tammy Daybell, and also 7-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow and 16-year-old Tylee Ryan, the children of his current wife and co-defendant Lori Vallow Daybell. Lori herself has already been convicted and sentenced to life in prison for her role in the murders. And for Chad, in many ways, his case is almost worse than hers. For instance, the bodies of these kids were found on his property, his backyard. His wife was found dead in their home. By the way, speaking of Tammy Daybell, it was initially believed that she died in her sleep of natural causes, but after her body was exhumed, when this investigation was going on and her body was exhumed and they thought foul play might be afoot, it was determined by authorities after an autopsy that she died from asphyxiation that this was a homicide. It didn't help Chad or Lori's cases that much that they were married two weeks after Tammy's death. They got married in Hawaii, pictures of them frolicking on the beach. Now, prosecutors allege that Lori and Chad, they were motivated by power, sex, and money, that they were having an affair, that they were cheating on their respective spouses, and they killed those three people to benefit financially through insurance and social security payouts, that they used dark religious beliefs as a motivation to kill, as a religious justification to kill, that people were possessed and the dark spirits needed to be eradicated from their bodies. Let's not forget, what makes this trial different from Lori's as well is that if Chad is convicted, unlike Lori Vallow-Daybell's case, the death penalty is on the table. Well, now let's get into seven disturbing moments or pieces of evidence that have come forward so far in this trial. And let me tell you, hard to narrow it down in this case. It really is. But let's start off when the bodies of these children were found on Chad's property back on June 9th, 2020. Decomposed, burnt, discarded bodies. Tylee was found near a fire pit. JJ was found near a pond. Authorities are searching Chad's property. And as they're searching his property, he speaks with Lori on the phone, and it was recorded. It was recorded because she was locked up in the Madison County Jail on charges of failing to produce her children when they were missing. Listen to this exchange. Hi, babe. Hello. Are you okay? So they're searching the property. The house right now? Yeah. Yeah. Mark means we'll be talking to you. Okay. Well, are they in the house? No, they're out in the property. Are they seizing stuff again? They're searching. Mm -hmm. There's a search warrant and so moment I just stood on those with the jibs. Okay. And we'll see what transpires. Okay. Yeah, I don't what do you want really... me to do? Pray. What? What do you want me yeah, to do? Yeah, pray. <laughs> pray. Um, yeah. Okay. What 
can I do for you? I'm feeling pretty calm. I would call Marco, Katie. I love you so much. Okay, I love you. Should I try to call you later? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, he can try, yeah. I'll answer if I can. No, he would be locked up from that moment on. And look, the significance of all this is the chilling nature of this. I mean, doesn't that seem awfully like two people who are not that surprised that police are searching this property? Not shocked that human remains will be found there? Where's the, what on earth is going on here? What are they doing? And remember, Chad's defense is, I didn't know those bodies were there. It seems that the defense is suggesting that it was Alex Cox who put the bodies on Chad's property. Remember, Alex Cox is Lori's deceased brother, the man that prosecutors suspect was the person who actually physically killed these kids. But doesn't a call like this one kind of show otherwise? Or how about this next piece of disturbing evidence from that day of the search and Chad's ultimate arrest? This was something we hadn't seen before this trial. Video of Chad speaking with his daughter, Emma. So at one point, Chad is placed in a patrol car and his daughter, Emma, starts talking to him. Again, listen carefully to Chad's words and his tone. Sorry, all the neighbors are going to be talking, but you just... (laughs) We're okay, Dad. Um, We're okay. You raised us, but we're independent now with your wallet. (laughs) Glad you got that. Right, but yeah, get that money out of there. Probably just put it in your own personal account. Um, Rather than have the cash later. Um, Yeah, I talked to Lori just for like two minutes, (laughs) so she's aware they were searching. Was she surprised? She seemed bothered or disturbed. I mean, yeah, but. but, so, yeah, I'll be fine. I don't know what they told you because I asked Lieutenant Law, where did you find the human remains? Because that's what they told me, is that they found human remains. And I said, well, there are several dogs that have been buried there. And he said, respectfully, Emma, I can tell the difference with human remains. And I asked, where was it? And he said, over by the pond under that tree. Mm. And it was in the ground and had boards over it. Mm. But that, that didn't, Jason and I have walked all over over there. Yeah. And I can see in your face that surprised you. Because they asked, do you want to know what he's charged for? And then they went, well, actually, we don't have it. They said, we don't want to tell you something wrong. Yeah, I don't know what they're charged for. How are they going to? And so he told me that the, what they're looking at is that they found one body with the probable cause. There's likely two. I think they'll let them back. I, There's nothing in the house. It sounds like you're not going to be out. Right. I've had a lot of success with mom stuff to think, will you help me? My mom <laughs> died. I'm pretty sure. Will you help me? My dad's in jail. At the same time. It should be paid through July 1st. Okay. And I think the car is paid through July 15th. So you shouldn't have any bills to worry about. Um, yeah, I, I'm not coming back. It's odd. It's an odd back and forth. And the argument could be that him saying there's nothing in the house is because he knows the kids are buried only outside. When he makes the comment that he knows he's not getting out and he's not coming back, I mean, the question is, How do you know that? You don't know what you're charged with yet. Do you say that because you know that the dead bodies are there? Where is again, get my lawyer on the phone. I'm innocent. It's so calm. And dare I say, almost he expected this to happen. Like, again, where is the surprise? The surprise at officers coming onto his property and finding remains. Sure, you could argue that it could be the shock of the moment. Okay. 
And I have to tell you, something incredibly off-putting about this is the way he's just walking his daughter through the finances and the bills and the money as he's being arrested after, again, police are finding human remains on his property. It's just weird. And by the way, this was something that was highlighted by the prosecution as well. Assuming that Chad didn't know where the kids' bodies were, is it not odd that apparently he kept looking in the direction of where the kids' bodies were eventually found while he was in that patrol car? He kept looking in those specific areas. Something to think about. But you want to talk disturbing? Let's move on to internet searches because internet searches in our cases reveal so much during trials, don't they? Well, we heard the testimony of Nicole Heidman. She's an FBI tactical specialist. She took the stand and she looked at internet searches allegedly conducted by Chad and Lori. For instance, this is the search activity from chad.daybell at gmail.com. And when you hear the name, by the way, Charles Vallow, that was Lori's previous husband, who she allegedly was cheating on with Chad. And Charles, by the way, was killed by Lori's brother, Alex Cox, in July of 2019 out in Arizona, shot him to death. Cox and Lori claimed at the time that this was self-defense, but authorities said that the evidence suggested otherwise. In fact, Lori is now actually facing a conspiracy to commit murder charge in Arizona for the death of Charles Val. Anyway. Let's take a listen to these internet searches from Chad's apparent account. What did you learn in relation to the relevance of Ned Snyder and Charles Vallow? In reviewing police reports uh, from Chandler Police Department and body cam footage, I believe from Gilbert Police Department, Charles Vallow makes comments that his wife, Lori Vallow, was referring to him as variations on the name Ned Schneider. Additionally, the name Ned and variations of the name Ned Snyder Schneider up here in Lori Vallow's iCloud accounts, uh, again, in reference to Charles Vallow. And then there's also one on their bodies possessed after original occupant dies. What was it about that that stood out to you? The concept of possession is uh, sort of prevalent through this investigation. This is, this I believe, the first time we start seeing it where wherein Charles Vallow is, has become possessed by an entity named Ned. So um, again, I spoke yesterday about there being a lot of aliases in this case uh, on uh, with Chad and Lori, but also with um, some, some of the victims in this case where they are possessed by entities and therefore then be, being referred to by these names, um, Ned being one of them for Charles. And then the next search on there, um, can you read the date and what that search was? January 31st, 2019, Ned Schneider, Louisiana, obituary 1997. And did that stand out to you for the same reasons you've just explained? It did. And then the next one on there, can you read that and what the, the date and what the search was? March 6, 2019, June 26th, star sign, are cancer and Leo compatible? May 4 sign, Taurus and Leo compatible. And when we're looking at this one, um, what stood out about this particular search? Lori Vallow's birthday is June 26th, making her a Cancer. May 4th was Tammy's birthday, and making her a Taurus. And Chad Daybell's birthday is August 11th, which makes him a Leo. And then the search of the compatibility between those, those signs. Hmm. So this idea that Charles was possessed being searched before Charles' untimely death is very suspicious. This religious theme, doomsday, evil spirits that have to be cast out, it's a recurring theme in this story. But you also hear about Tammy, too. Remember, Chad was allegedly cheating on Tammy with Lori. And let's focus on that because the motive put forward by prosecutors is Chad murdered Tammy to be finally free with Lori and to cash in on insurance benefits. But look at this search before Tammy's death, and Tammy died in October of 2019. Can you read the date and talk a little bit about that one? May 5th, 2019, Malachite and eBay Malachite jewelry. And what stood out about that to you? Chad and Lori uh, eventually ended up purchasing Malachite stone uh, wedding bands. Preparing for their spouses to die and then get married, that would be the argument. But there were even more searches. How about the next search, the date and that search? 
July 9th, 2019, when you surprise someone with accusations. What caught your attention in relation to that search? That search was conducted two days before Charles was shot and killed. And then the next one, September, the one on September 8th, 2019, if you could talk about that search. SSW wind, and what is the definition of SSW direction? What caught your attention with that wind search? That search occurred the last day of Tylee Ryan's sighting, and we believe she was uh, burned and buried on his property the following day. That is especially chilling because that goes to the idea that Chad knew and was a part of the killing and disposal of the kids. The remains, why are you looking up the wind on that specific day when the allegation is that you were complicit in burning her body? When, as Heidman testified, he really never looked this up before. And you couple that with this bizarre text that he allegedly sends Tammy on September 9th, the day that we believe Tammy was buried. He texts Tammy that he was burning limb debris in the yard and that he saw a raccoon and had to kill it and bury it in the family pet cemetery. That has always been thought to be a way that Chad was trying to cover up the actual burning and burial of Tylee's body. Now, one of the most disturbing and chilling pieces of evidence presented during this case is a phone call with Chad and Lori and their friend, Melanie Gibb. So the kids are missing, Tammy is dead, and Melanie calls Chad and Lori specifically to find out where JJ is. Why? Well, apparently, Lori told the police that JJ was with Melanie. And it's a conversation that is weird and a bit tense. Hi, Chad. Hey, Lori. Hi. Hey, let me put on speaker. Oh, okay. Lori. We're in a <laughs> How are you guys? Okay. How are you doing, babe? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. I was wondering, where, where are you guys? We're just hanging out. Hey, are you are you in Idaho? No. Idaho. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question, if you don't mind, Lori. Yeah. Um, I want to know. Um, you remember we talked about JJ going to Case House, and you told me they went there, and now he's not there. I was wondering what happened. Well. I had to move him somewhere else because of her actions. So was she was she doing something? Like was she trying to come get him or something? Or like trying to kidnap him? Well, she's yeah, she said that lots of times before, but um Okay. I well when you know when I asked Chad the other day, I was like hey, um, you know, where where is JJ? And he said, for my security. He didn't want me to know, so is there a reason I should be in danger to know where he is? <laughs> no, it's nobody. It's his danger. It's the danger that there's people after me. Okay. So, if you knew that puts you in a danger. <laughs> well, just in a bad position. Yeah, a bad position. Everybody, if they don't know anything, then they don't have to say they know. Right, so you're just worried. Okay. Um, I'm just to keep him protected and we'll keep you protected and keep everybody else. I appreciate that. Um, well, I was wondering why you told the police why he was with me. I just needed to use top somebody that I so I wouldn't have to tell them where he really was because they were going to tell Kay where he is. Oh, uh, yeah. So, is it you think it's like your family or you know, like your family, your dad, or you know, those well, people? Family. Well, not my whole family, but you know, as you know, most of my family is working against me and yeah, with her, basically. Yeah. Is JJ safe? He is safe and happy. No, he was dead and buried. Kay, by the way, is Kay Woodcock, JJ's grandmother. Let's keep this going. And I believe that... Look, I believe that you have been very deceived by Satan. I believe that he has tricked you. 
And I just, I don't believe that what you're doing is correct. I just don't, I mean, Tammy dies and then your husband died and then he's, and then he's missing. It just doesn't sound like God's plan to me. It just sounds, it gives me a gut feeling like in my gut, it feels weird. It doesn't feel right. I don't have peace about it. I never have felt hundred percent peace about it. I always felt like a little weird in my stomach about all these things. You know me, Mel. You know me. This does not sound like you. This sounds like you've been influenced by somebody dark. I just want to testify that I, I know Tammy. I had that conspiracy theories. My sister-in-law is right behind it all, and I hope that you're not being influenced by that dark team. Hmm. I mean, we know where the kids are. We know where their bodies were found. What do you think the jury is thinking, or what conclusion could they jump to about what Lori and Chad were thinking right there? What do they think they knew at that moment? Couldn't the assumption be that Chad knows perfectly well where the kids are, where JJ is? And look, on the other side, John Pryor, Chad's attorney, he cross-examined Melanie Gibb, who took the stand, cross-examined her about this, and more specifically highlighted the fact that she actually wasn't honest with police initially about JJ's whereabouts. So her credibility could be at issue. But nonetheless, this is an audio tape. This is Chad and Lori saying what they said, or maybe more importantly, what they don't say. And that's important. Let's talk about Melanie Gibb a little bit more because she testified this past week. Let's hear some of what she had to say. At some point, did she talk to you more about what it meant if the evil spirit came in, like where the actual person went? So when a dark spirit would take over, the the original spirit of the person would go into the spirit world. And that's what she originally told you? That's right. And did she tell you she received that information from Chad? Yes. Was there a way to do something to help that person? Um, She would try to... um, do like um, a casting out of an evil spirit um, and and try to convince the spirit to the, the evil spirit to leave. Can you tell me a little bit about what would happen at the casting? Um, so Lori and a few of her friends would stand in a circle and then um, feel like they had the power and authority to cast out the evil spirit by trying to use words, I guess, like an energy work to be able to convince them to leave and hoping that the evil spirit would leave. Did you participate in the castings for Charles? Yes. At any point, did Lori tell you whether or not the casting was successful? Um, Yes. And what did she share with you? She would say that that Ned had left and then shortly after she would say somebody else got in another entity. Do you know who told her that information or where she got it from? Yes, she got it from Chad. And did she tell you that? Yes. At some point, did you learn what would happen to the body if the casting was actually successful? Um, she would say that, that the body would, was supposed to die if, they, if, it would, if the evil spirit left. So in Charles' case, Ned's out and a new spirit's in. Correct. At some point, did Lori talk to you about some struggles with JJ? Yes. What did she share with you about that? She said that he was um, acting out more um, as far as the weekend that I was there in September, that he was acting like he was possessed. He was... um, one minute he would be upset. One minute she would say he was talking very intelligent. Um, just a variety of different um, behaviors. Um, she seemed troubled by it, that he had been taken over by evil spirit, that he was upsetting. I don't know. She just seemed kind of upset by it. Now, to be very clear here, Chad is not charged in connection with Charles Vallow's death, but only the kids and Tammy's deaths. However, You're hearing this testimony to illustrate these warped religious beliefs that emanated seemingly from Chad, that there is a pattern here of people in this couple's way, dark spirits need to be eliminated, and there is a connection to Charles too, because let's not forget, prosecutors assert 
that Charles found out that Lori was having an affair with Chad and that he contacted or tried to contact Tammy Daybell to let her know about the affair. So it's all connected in a way. But really what I wanted to highlight was that last part, that J.J. was also believed to be possessed because I need you to process that for a second. The idea of him being possessed, these warped ideas, warped justification, him being possessed, right before he dies. Now, I am going to end on this. I think there is one piece of evidence that kind of makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. And I will tell you, actually, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up a lot with this case, but I'm going to highlight something in particular. This is something that happens on November 24th, 2019. So if we take the accusation as true that Alex Cox murdered or helped to murder and dispose of J.J. and Tylee, Tammy Daybell, also dead. Charles Vallow, also dead. Well, weeks before Alex Cox died, again, the purported hitman in all of this, who once allegedly claimed that he was worried about being the fall guy for Lori and Chad, weeks before he dies from apparent blood clots, something happens. Chad blesses Alex Cox, and this blessing is recorded. Listen carefully to the words. Alexander Lamar Cox, on this special day, I lay my hands upon your head to give you a patriarchal blessing as part of a mem- the member of the Church of the Firstborn that you have earned the privilege to be a member of. I do so by the power of the Melchizedek priesthood, which I hold and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has authorized this blessing, and we're selected by the Savior himself to be part of the fourth creation. Great warriors were needed in that creation. Powerful goddesses were needed to be protected, and you were selected to help protect your sister. And you helped her in numerous probations you had to go to great depths to achieve tremendous heights and the fruits of those trials are beginning to be demonstrated i just want you to know that at this time the savior is saying to me well done thy soul is cleansed. All is well. You have a great mission. I protect you. I bless you with a strong protection against Satan and his followers, Lucifer, Cain, anyone else who seeks to oppose you. Now, apparently, the Church of Firstborn is not affiliated with LDS, and it's hard to know what to make of all of this, other than if you believe Alex Cox murdered these children and that he is the one that killed Charles Vallow, not in self-defense. If you believe that, then Chad is blessing him, cleansing his soul for what he did. That's the argument. Which is also chilling because Alex Cox dies again only weeks later in December. And there are points in this where it feels almost you can make the argument that it's like he's predicting Alex's death. There's this language like moving to the other side. That's something kind of what we heard. It's weird. So this is just a sampling of some of the disturbing things we've heard so far this week in the Chad Daybell trial. I am fairly confident that there will be a lot more as this trial continues. That's all we have for you here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.